Hi, I'm Marcus, and today we're going to learn how to take apart a G540, evaluate it, replace the G250, replace the fuse, and get it back up and running. So let's get started. So first thing we have is we have a G540 in our evaluation stand right now that when you turn it on, nothing happens. And you can see that the current on the power supply is maxing out. That's indicative of a short somewhere in it. Uh, so, no point in even keeping it powered up. What we're going to want to do is get a flat blade screwdriver and pry one tab and pry the other tab just over right there and then it'll kind of hinge apart and come off. So now we're inside the G540. What we want to do next is pull the motherboard off. You'll see it's kind of hard to do. It's held in just by tension of the uh, 2x15 headers in there. So pull it off. We now have four G250s inside and the motherboard. We'll put this aside and now we're going to plug in just the motherboard. Uh, what we typically recommend is you plug in the motherboard by itself to DC power, so terminals 11 and 12, an e-stop jumper, which you can't see it in this jumble of wires, but those two are shorted out. That's, that's what you need to do. Uh, and turn this switch off, which is the charge pump switch. Uh, the e-stop jumper on this stand is dependent on this being plugged in, so that's why I have to plug it in, but otherwise you would leave everything disconnected. So now we're going to turn power on and we should get a green LED if the motherboard's okay. And there we go. So motherboard's just fine. This is doing diagnostics, checking all IO. Those are all good. So turn that off. Motherboard is now verified as no problem. So we'll put it aside. Next thing we want to do is look for visual signs of damage on the uh, drives. Uh, this one won't have any because I'm the one that broke it and I, I know what problems it has right now. Uh, so you just want to look, generally these two components right here, these are current sense resistors. Uh, if there's something major on those, uh, they'll, they'll be destroyed uh, and it'll look like there's a hole blown in them. Uh, that's if there's been catastrophic damage. So what we want to do is uh, you would start at your x-axis you uh, have a multimeter, uh, you would put on ohms, and then you should have a continuity test, and it's gonna be that right there. Hit that, what it does is when it finds a short, like these two probes touching, uh, it's gonna beep. And so what we're looking for is we're looking for a shorted MOSFET. Uh, the G250 uses a dual H-bridge design, which means it has eight MOSFETs on there. So what we want to do is put one probe, uh, good practice is negative, you don't have to use negative, you can use anything. Uh, every four pins on here is going to be one power section. So pins one, two, three, and four is DC negative. Five, six, seven, eight is DC positive. Uh, nine, 10, 11, 12 is gonna be the first phase of the motor. So we're going to go down the line and measure in blocks of four and just listening for continuity. Uh, if you don't have a continuity alarm, uh, it's fine. Uh, what you should read on one half of the bridge is an open lead like this on the, uh, uh, on the multimeter. And then on the other side, you should read uh, just a, a very large resistance. Uh, when a MOSFET fails, it invariably fails shorted. So then we go back down the line, blocks of four, and measure the other half of the bridge. So what we did was we moved the other probe to the positive side, and that was me just trying to point with it, nice and shorted. Uh, but so first test, you put one probe on one, two, three, four. Second test, you put the probe on five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna go down the line. So the x-axis proved to be just fine. We're going to do the exact same test. So there's a short right there. So this is the first one, so that's called A. We just call the first MOSFET A, second one's B, then C, and then D. So, so right now we're at A minus, because it's the minus on the uh, uh, power supply. Then we'll move this over to 5678, which is DC plus. Do the exact same test. 
and so A, that one's shorted as well, B, C, D. So what we have is we have both sides of the A phase destroyed on this. Uh, the way I did that, uh, because the G540 has protection against most things, most things built into it, uh, I had to actually apply power to the, uh, to the 250 and then short it out for about 10 seconds to cause that kind of damage. Uh, always check your wiring, that's the most important thing. Uh, but now that we know this is the bad one, uh, assuming I went down the line and tested the rest of them as well. Uh, uh, so. What we want to do now is, this is a size 2 uh, hex wrench, and we just unscrew it, unscrew it, and this G250 comes right out. Uh, what you then want to do is go on our website, fill out a RMA request form, uh, and send just this one back. And then we can reassemble the G540 as just a three axis. So you would now run with an open slot right there. Uh, if I put it back correctly. With an open slot on the Y. So you have X, Z, and A drives in there. Let's plug it in. Verify, because remember we got no LED before. And we have a green LED now. So this one drive was the culprit, uh, and that is all we need to do. Uh, another thing is if you still do not get any LEDs, uh, you would want to replace the fuse on the G540, uh, which the fuse can be found right here, where it says fuse on the motherboard. Uh, so it's gonna be the bottom side of the motherboard, or side of the motherboard, uh, right next to the power terminals. So what you do is just get tweezers, something just to pry it out. Uh, the uh, fuse is socketed so users can replace it. Take it out. This fuse is good so we're going to reuse it. But take a new fuse. Uh, you probably want to use tweezers but just get it in there, line it up with the socket, and push it back in. There we go. So you can see the fuse is now good. We know the fuse is good. Uh, and if you have a spare G250X, uh, you can use it in the G540. They're completely modular, so you can use any G250X Rev3. Uh, uh, if you have a newer G540 that's a Rev8 motherboard, you can tell it's a Rev8 motherboard uh, because the trim pots are on the motherboard. Uh, the G250X Rev3s, you can tell it's a Rev3 because there's no trim pot right here. Uh, we just try to make it easier for users to do. Uh, so what you'll do is take your known good G250X Rev3 uh, that you purchased as a spare uh, so you wouldn't have any downtime if you're sending something in for repair. Uh, plug it in. And screw it down. Okay, now that your G250X Rev3 is screwed back down to the heatsink plate, uh, we can reassemble the G540. And to do that, just line up the 2x15 headers, the male and female inside. You can see it better from this view. And then just push down. And you'll see that it's flat, sturdy, resist being pulled. Uh, then we want to take the cover, and the best thing to do with that is line it up like this, so it's on the DB25 side. It should be like this, where you can see it's uh, skewed. And then we'll take a screwdriver, just to help each of these over the little tab. And we will push it down. You should hear it clip in place. You can see that it's now reassembled. What we want to do next is verify that the G540 is doing what it's supposed to. Let's put it back in our diagnostic stand, turn on power, and there we go. Green LED, all diagnostics are coming back normal, so it is good to go. Okay, 
Now that we know the G540 is good, we can plug in motors. Uh, we typically recommend turning power off before you plug them in. So let's plug in all four of them in line. And make sure you only use the DB9 connectors that come with the G540. And turn it on. And all four of these motors, uh, we have this tester designed to run the motors at their most rough speed for easy tuning, which I will show you right now. And what we do for that is we just do one axis at a time. So this is gonna be the X axis. Uh, and you can hear how rough it is which if you get real close to it, it the uh, bench acts as a uh, soundboard for you. So what we do is we take a flat blade screwdriver and we turn the trim pot until it sounds best. And right there is how you tune the G540. Uh, if you want to watch the oscilloscope, you can see exactly what is happening. We have an inductive current probe on one motor winding. And you can see, when you turn the trim pot, it just stretches or compacts the actual waveform. And right there is about perfect. You can do it by ear, and it gets you 99% of the way there. And now we can unplug it. You do the same thing for all four axes, and you now have a G540 that is good to go and 100% working. Uh, the broken G250X uh, can be sent back here and we will fix it and get it back to you if it's fixable. Uh, and that is all you need to know. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more informative videos, tutorials, and more.